I'm Richard Leakey. We all know that the world is getting desperately short of oil and something has to be done about it. One of the more promising and exciting developments of the present time is HPVs, the human powered vehicles. To most of us, that means a bicycle, a vehicle used extensively in some parts of the world, but seldom taken seriously in America. But the range of HPVs is much larger than that, fulfilling different needs for everyone involved in developing them. Whatever they look like, they're all intended to move people around as efficiently as possible. Steve Roberts has needs that are not unusual for an urban dweller working out of an office, and his bicycle is unlike any other you're likely to pass. That's right, Steve lives on this bicycle. I'm running a very complex freelance writing and consulting business living on a bicycle, and I do it all through computer networks, satellite links, portable computing tools, cellular phone modem, fax, all this stuff. And I'm doing it under solar power on a bicycle. Now there's a message in that. I think human-powered vehicles can go a long way toward helping with air pollution and other environmental problems. It's going to take more of an infrastructure than it currently has, though. You know, we can produce very beautiful human-powered machines, but if the only facilities for riding them are existing roads in, com in company with motorized vehicles, then very few people are going to want to do it. I mean, who wants to risk their life to commute every day to work? I've seen people jump in, an, uh, jump in a car to go two blocks to a store. You know, it's, it's sheer insanity because for so long it's been considered to be free. You know, energy gas is cheap according to most people's budgets and all I can say is that's got to change and and the only way it's going to change is through individual awareness that there's a problem there's no single corporate or governmental event that is going to change that kind of behavior there's evidence of a growing awareness at the 17th annual international HPV championships people have come to Milwaukee from Europe Canada and across the United States the event promotes creativity in the design and the development of human-powered transportation on land and on water as well. And while some of the designs may look outrageous, the people here share a vision of human power as a practical way of getting around. And the assumption everyone shares is that these vehicles should not just be for the young. I'm 56 years old and I really think that people, there's a mindset in this world that when you start to get in your 50s, your 60s, that, that you're over the hill. I really don't think you are. I want to build a commuter vehicle that I can go out and pretty well guarantee myself 20 miles an hour in comfort. The conventional bicycle has a little narrow seat. I don't like the little narrow seat. I have a nice wide seat in here, in here that's very comfortable. I can take this bike and go out and do 30, 40, 50 miles in it, be very comfortable, be protected from the weather. And the neat thing of it is it's fun. I just enjoy it so much. I usually train in a cemetery because there's not too many cars there. I don't own a car. This is how I get around. It carries all my groceries, my recyclables. I can haul up to 200 pounds if I put my trailer on the back. It's exciting to move at 50 miles an hour on your own power, and racing is the best way to test out different designs. Then the engineers can take over. They'll modify these designs to come up with efficient, comfortable vehicles many of us may someday use. But not everybody wants to break records. It may not be the fastest thing around, but Steve Roberts' bicycle shows how technology can be adapted to serve people's needs and their imaginations as well. Humans are multiprocessors. I mean, our brains are not single-thread machines like computers, and we really can do a lot of things at once. One of the things that seems to amaze people most about the bike, which amazes me, is the idea of the handlebar keyboard and being able to type while riding. It's really not much harder than carrying on a conversation while walking or driving. You know, it's one part of my brain is, is doing this visceral sort of intuitive thing, which is steer a little bit and pedal and make sure I don't fall off the side of the road. Another part of my brain is dealing with little subtle fingertip motions and creating text, which goes into a computer. There's a two-meter ham radio in the console and a large, much larger system in the back and a little push-to-talk switch in the handlebars and I can chat with people while I'm doing all of the above. This device is a private eye. It's a heads-up display and it creates a, it's a 720 by 280 computer screen that appears to be floating in space somewhere out in front of me. This is a 72-watt array from SolarX. It puts about 5 amps into my 12-volt batteries and is my primary power source. This is a satellite antenna. This is a 14 gigahertz uplink to the GTE G-Star satellite. This thing can tell you your latitude, longitude, and elevation to two or 300 feet precision anywhere in the world. See, ain't technology wonderful? A lot of people get involved in, in kind of an anti-technology stance because people using technology have been responsible for so many of the world's problems. 
And a lot of people view technology as the villain. Technology is the tool that we have to use to solve our problems. Our problems are too big now to solve by just going back to the land and, and uh, you know, sort of ignoring it all. A good, intelligent, long-term investment right now would be electric cars, more bike paths, the kinds of things that will make the disappearance of petroleum less traumatic. One of the things I've learned from traveling on this machine is that if you get too obsessed with where you're going, you lose respect for where you are. And at first, that seemed to me to be a rule about bicycle travel, and it started becoming obvious that it's a rule about life. If you think too much about your destination, then everything between here and there is an obstacle. And I think that's a big psychological change that has to happen with people, because uh, perfectly nice people become quite obnoxious sometimes when they're behind a wheel. And that doesn't happen to people on bicycles.